In the following series of lectures, we're going to dive into the compositions of compounds and solutions a little bit more. Now, these are still foundational concepts that'll give us the skills and tools we need to be able to participate in simple chemistry labs that'll then amplify the lessons we learn later on. We'll go into concentration and solutions in a lot more detail in Chemistry 162, and we'll spend more time on composition as well when we talk about covalent bonding. Uh, but we're going to get our, our base level, and where I'd like to start with this is with the mole. So to set the stage for talking about what a mole of something is, let's first talk about a molecule. We mentioned in our previous lectures that we can track the mass of a molecule by adding up its molecular weight. Um, and we could do that, it's also called the formula mass. And we could do that by taking the mass of each of the atoms that are in that compound or that molecule and adding them together. Um, and so that gives us a, an equation here that's really the sum of the number of atoms for any element times the atomic mass for that element. Um, so I've got an example here for carbon dioxide, and I'd like to point out that my units in this are atomic mass units. When we talk about the weight of one atom, we use units of atomic mass units. When we talk about the mass of lots of atoms, we'll use grams instead. And so AMU is not one of our metric units. It's not a simple conversion between that and grams. It's not just a really tiny gram at all. Um, and so when we take our different um, masses for each of our atoms and we add them up, we can get a, a formula mass or a molecular mass of just a molecule that would have units of atomic mass units. And for carbon dioxide, I have one carbon. So I'm making sure I have uh, one times that atomic mass of carbon. And I have two oxygens in the chemical formula. So that two, that's that subscript, gets translated into the two that I multiply by the atomic mass of oxygen. And uh, taking those, those products and summing them together will give me 44.08 atomic mass units. Uh, all right. And so, so that, that's the weight of a molecule, but, but we're rarely going to be able to isolate a molecule in a lab, uh, definitely not in our general chemistry lab. And so we're gonna have to work with a lot more of these compounds, and that's where the mole comes in. So let's start by defining it. So uh, in general, when chemical reactions take place, it, is, uh, it proceeds by two molecules or particles or atoms colliding with one another. And then in that collision, if enough energy exists in that collision, it can transform into something new. And we'll go into that in a lot of details, really interesting reaction dynamics. But because these reactions rely on these individual molecules smashing into each other, then we really need to understand and track the number of particles or molecules or atoms that we have in our reaction vessel to understand what chemical reaction will happen or how much of a product we would form. So that means we want to be able to count the number of molecules or atoms that we have in a reaction. And there's a lot. In any amount of a compound that I can measure, I'll have just so many of these molecules. And so we, we can't just count them out. We don't have a way of doing that. So we have to count them by weight. Uh, this is the same principle um, as if you were running a really big factory that makes like screws and you needed to deliver just tons of screws to uh, uh, one of your uh, distributors. You wouldn't count out each individual screw if you needed like a million of them. Instead, you would take the average weight of a screw and then multiply that by the number you need and then weigh out the amount of screws by just like pouring it onto a scale until you hit the amount that should be the mass of a million screws. And then you take that, you package it up, you send it off. Same thing with atoms, same thing with molecules. And that's why molecular mass becomes so important. So 
we're going to count by weight and we're going to use a counting number that isn't a numeric value to uh, kind of categorize amounts of molecules and atoms. And we do this in our daily lives all the time. Uh, right now, I have a dozen eggs in my refrigerator. And that means I have 12, right? We use that word dozen to mean 12 objects. And I can have a dozen of lots of things. I can have a dozen uh, donuts. I can have a dozen croissants. We use it a lot when we talk about baking, I'm realizing. <laughs> Um, we also have a gross of objects. So if I wanted to buy a lot of bouncy balls, like a lot of bouncy balls uh, to make like a bouncy ball pit, I would need a couple gross. And a gross would be 144 objects. So when I purchase things or build things or distribute things in large quantities, I would always use gross instead of the exact number like ah and that's that's just another counting word that we have that's not a numeric value and so with chemistry we have one of these counting numbers and it's called the mole and instead of it being a, a small number like 12 or 144 it's a huge number it's uh 6.022 and there's some more digits times 10 to the 23rd objects so that that's not small it's one. It's that many objects. It's a ton. Um, so it's a really big number because we're dealing with something really, really small. So we'd have to have a lot of it to be something that we could actually measure visually. Uh, and so this is my favorite way of thinking about it. Uh, so donuts, donuts are, I, I, I mean, maybe they're not more interesting than molecules, but they are more delicious. So I can have one donut. Yeah, that's okay. I could have a dozen donuts and I would have 12 and then I could share them and that would be great. But I could also have a mole of donuts. A mole of donuts would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd donuts. And if I had that many donuts, which would be amazing, I would be able to layer the earth five miles or eight kilometers deep in donuts. Like the entire earth is just donuts five miles up into the sky. Um, so so it's, it's, a bit, it's a big number. That's the point. So, so what does it actually look like when we're not talking about donuts? Um, so if, if a mole of donuts is five miles of donuts covering the surface of the earth, then a mole of carbon atoms is really something that would fit in the palm of your hand. And so uh, if we took that mole of carbon atoms in the palm of our hand, we put it on something we could weigh, it would weigh 12 grams. Now remember, the mass of one, there we go, the mass of one average carbon atom taking into account its like different possible isotopes, is 12.01 atomic mass units. And so the numeric value will be the same if we're talking about one carbon atom's weight or if we're talking about a mole of carbon atom's weight. And the unit is different. Atomic mass units for individual atoms or molecules, grams for piles of them or a mole of them. So let's talk about this number a little bit more. So a mole of carbon atoms would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon atoms. And a mole of something that's not an atom, like a molecule instead, would be a mole of carbon dioxide molecules. And it would be the same number. It would be 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd carbon dioxide molecules. So the number of them is the same. Now the mass would be really different, right? Because one carbon atom, weighs less than a carbon dioxide molecule. That carbon atom is 12 atomic mass units. That carbon dioxide molecule is about 44 atomic mass units. And so we'll find that we can actually use Avogadro's number, since it's his counting number, as a conversion factor. And so I can see that I can write any conversion factor as uh, a couple ways. I can do it as a fraction. I can also write it as an equality. So it could be something like 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd things equals one mole. And so that's my equality version of this. I can also do it as a fraction too. So I've got one mole divided by 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd 
or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd divided by a mole. And the tricky thing about this as a conversion factor and why Avogadro's number is usually just listed as a number is the, the units for it vary. Kind of like you can have a dozen of lots of different objects, you can have a mole of lots of different things too. And so it might be uh, in your conversion factor, it might be uh, instead of, and I've here I've put things because it can be anything, it might be something like atoms, or it might be molecules, or it might be particles, or it might be donuts, or it might be eggs, right? Uh, and so we'll use this as a conversion factor, but you're going to have to supply that unit from the context of the problem of what you're working with. 